to Connect Kids. We're so glad that you're here with us today. Let's get ready to sing, dance, and celebrate Jesus in your life. Kind. It's not jealous anytime. It's not proud and it's not rude. Love forgives and speaks the truth. Oh, yeah. Love will never fail. Oh, yeah. Love will never fail. Love protects, it does not break. It doesn't easily get mad. Love is hopeful and it trusts. When we love, we never give up. Oh, Shipping. Let's take a seat and focus on our video. Working with the excavator, working with the excavator, working with the excavator. Yeah! Beep, 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 beep. beep hey, Skip, beep, what are you working on? Oh, hey, Suze. I'm just working on the plans for an office I'm about to start building downtown. Okay, so how's it going? It's going great. Just finishing up the blueprints, like I always do. Oh, uh, really? You always do blueprints like this? Yeah. It's not exactly to scale, seeing as how I'm working with Legos, but I'm, it always works out. And what are you doing with that excavator? Oh. I'm getting used to handling big equipment so that I'll be ready to tear down the old mill to prepare the new job site. So you think that by practicing with this toy excavator, you'll be able to operate a real one? Well, why wouldn't I? I thought you would want to help me. Want to give it a try? Skip, you have got to be kidding me. There's no way that you or I can do this big of a job. What are you so worried about? I was asked to do the job, and I know what I'm doing. I've got everything under control. See the plans? That's no plan, Skip. That's not an official blueprint. If this is the only plan that you've got, then there's so many terrible things that could happen to you, the builders, or the people that are going to actually be in this office. Calm down, Susie Q. My blueprint is just a scaled down representation of all the work that has to get done. But you haven't included the important safety measures like plumbing, underground piping, gas, and power. Skip, there is nothing about this building that will be built to code. It's just fine. We'll be wearing our hard hats like we always do. Does that help you feel any better? Not exactly. What if a big storm comes? With torrential downpour. See? No worries, still standing. Oh yeah? What if strong winds come? From a huge tornado. See, no worries, still standing. Well, what about a volcano erupting? And hot lava shooting everywhere. See, no worries. Just a little cleanup, but um, still standing. As a matter of fact, a barrel of monkeys could attack the building site. And see, no worries, still standing. Hey everybody, listen up. Here's what God has to say. Has to say about what? Well, I was just about to tell you Wait, that... is it good news? Bad news. Like, good news as when we're having pancakes for dinner? Pancakes? What are you even talking about? Oh no! 
Is it bad news? As in velociraptors are prowling around downtown with laser beams coming from their eyes and they're stealing everyone's pants? So many pants! It's got me so worried. Uh, let, let me stop you right there. That's what our story is about. About pants? Ha ha, not pants. Worrying. There are so many things we can worry about, and God has something to say about it. So let's jump into our story about Gideon. Gideon, my main man. But wait, what did he have to worry about? Great question, and great place to start. So Gideon was an Israelite. The Israelites were God's chosen people, but they started to do some really bad things that upset him. Oh, like cheating on tests and staying up past their bedtimes? That's like bad, bad. Oh, even really badder than that. They started to disobey God. So he let a mean group of people, the Midianites, rule over them. For years, they would attack the Israelites and destroy their crops. Oh man, bullies who take your lunch money? Definitely lots to worry about. Oh yeah, and this went on forever. Finally, the Israelites shouted out to God, asking for his help. Time to throw up? The bat signal! Even though the Israelites had started worshiping false gods, the one true God heard their cries. He had an idea and was about to come through for them big time. He was going to give them a shrink ray gun so they could turn the Midianites into little baby ants. Now that's an idea. Oh, it's an idea, all right. And that's where Gideon comes back into the picture. Gideon, who was hiding while separating the wheat they used for bread, was worried that if the Midianites knew he had food, they would take it. That's when God sent an angel who said to Gideon, Mighty warrior, God is with you. Gideon did not feel like God was with them and asked the angel about all the bad things that were happening. That's when God himself spoke to Gideon. He said, You are strong. Go and save Israel from the power of Midian. I am sending you. Well, I guess it doesn't get much more clear than that, right? Well, you'd think so, but Gideon was still worried. He wondered why on earth God would choose him to go save everyone. It's not like he came from a strong family. Gideon didn't feel important at all. God reassured Gideon that he would be with him, but Gideon needed a sign. So he asked God to stick around for a minute while he prepared an offering. I'm sure God didn't mind waiting since he's got all the time in the world. <laughs> Gideon whipped up some bread and goat stew, brought it back and placed it on a rock. That's when the angel touched it with a stick and the whole thing went up in flames. Flaming bread and flaming stew and flaming rocks. There weren't any flaming rocks, but Gideon did make an altar there for God. And speaking of altars, that same night, Gideon snuck around. Like a ninja dressed in all black, throwing ninja stars at the other altars and slicing a pole in half using a samurai sword. Gideon didn't have ninja stars or a samurai sword but he did destroy the altar and pole his family had used for worshiping false gods. Yeah, that's what I meant to say. Gideon did all this at night because he was afraid and worried that his family would be very angry with him. When the townspeople saw what Gideon had done, they wanted him to pay for it. But nothing bad happened to Gideon. Sounds like that was a close call. It sure was. A little while later, the Midianites started moving in for another attack. And it didn't take long for Gideon to start worrying again. He knew God had promised to use him to save Israel and all, but uh, he needed another reminder. What did Gideon have in mind? It's not like God could just shoot him a text. Uh, yeah, no cell phones. But Gideon did have an idea. You see, dew would form overnight and make the ground, as well as everything else around it, wet. So Gideon left a piece of wool on the ground overnight and asked God to make the wool wet from the dew, but leave the ground dry. Wet wool, dry ground, check. Sure enough, God did just that. But Gideon still wasn't sure and asked God if he'd do just the opposite the next night. Okay, so dry wool and wet ground, got it. When Gideon woke up the next morning, that's exactly what he found. The wool was dry, but the ground around it was covered in dew. Please tell me Gideon trusted God this time. Gideon was now confident that God wanted him to fight the Midianites. He knew that the Lord thought he was good enough to do the job. So Gideon decided to stop worrying, trust God, and do exactly what God wanted him to do. So the next time we find ourselves worrying about anything, we can trust God. Whoa, what 
a cool video. We hope that you learned something fun and interesting and you can take it home to share with your friends and family. We hope to see you next time here at Connect Kids. Have a great week. Mm -hmm.